In Start Me Up, tips for startup success. Sharon Miller, head of small business banking at Bank of America. Steve Strauss, an attorney and small business expert, are here to help. Now you surveyed small business owners and what did you discover? At Bank of America, we serve one out of every three business owners in the United States. So we have a pretty good finger on the pulse, so to speak. And, and what we're hearing from our clients is optimism in the local economies. We, we survey our clients twice per year to understand how they're feeling about revenue, about growth prospects. And by all accounts, those surveys coming back are showing the highest levels we've seen since we started surveying clients. So there is optimism out there. I would also say, Angela, that in the business community, entrepreneurs by nature are optimistic people. And so uh, we are seeing growth, we are seeing more businesses open, and in fact, women are increasingly opening businesses uh, actually at twice the rate of men with half the capital. That's what we're seeing. Is now a good time to open a business, and what are your top tips, Steve? I think it's really important to, to look at the technology that's available to small businesses these days. It's an amazing time to be in business, and one of those reasons is that large companies are making really powerful tools for small business so that we can be small, be nimble, be personal, which is what's great about small business, but look big. And that allows us to have employees who work when and where and how they want, which is what employees want, and customers to interact with us in a variety of ways. Um, so look at those different tools. I know, for example, Bank of America, and Sharon can speak to this better than I, has a new financial tool that helps small businesses run their business more effectively. We do, Steve. And in fact, we just launched our Business Advantage 360, which is really like a mission control for business owners and entrepreneurs. It lets them know what's happening with their business, what's coming due, what do they need to pay out, who's going to be paying into their business. And so it helps them understand and manage their cash flow, which, Steve, as you know, cash flow right. many times is a key reason why businesses go out of business. They're just not managing it properly. I know from experience, it's challenging to keep on going and it can be lonely. There are online resources. So you don't have to be out there by yourself, but you can find a team that helps you, whether it's virtual or you know in the physical world, that allows you to you know do your business, do what you do, but get the help that you need. I think a lot of entrepreneurs have fear even once the company is off the ground. What do you suggest? Well, there's always going to be a little bit of fear because that's just the nature of being in business. I mean, the, the, the essence of business is you're going to take a risk. You're going to take a, you know, the smart small businesses, the best entrepreneurs, reduce that risk to the extent that they can. But there's always going to be a little risk, and that's kind of the juice and the fun of it. But, you know, you also want to reduce it, be smart be a wise business person. So be an entrepreneur, but also be a business person, I think. That's right, and when you, uh, when you are thinking about how to make the right choices and the calculated risk and risk, because you know life and business, it's about taking risk. Right. You have to take risk. No risk, no reward, but at the end of the day, you can take smart risk, and you can do that by partnering with someone that can help you understand what's happening in that local community. How do I adapt and become flexible? How do I adjust my business plan as times change, as the economy changes? What should be the number one priority or mistake you see entrepreneurs make? One mistake I see people make is not having a business plan. And I understand you may not want to make a business plan because it's you know, not fun, but it's really not that hard either. The important thing though is that you think through your business so that you know how you're going to get from point A to B or Z or whatever the case may be. A, a pilot would never get in a plane and fly from New York to Phoenix without a flight plan. That pilot needs to know what direction to head in, how much gas they need, um, markers to look for along the way. That's all your business plan is. It's your flight plan for your success. And when you go to get a, bank, a loan from Bank of America, wherever, they're going to want to see your business plan as well. So it helps you think through your business and it also helps you get the team and the, and the finances that you need. And Steve, the, also the thing that I hear from clients where um, that, that I find another pitfall. Yes, you need to have a business plan, but you also need to be flexible enough to adjust that plan yes. as times change, as your client demand changes. And you've got to listen to your clients, listen to your customers, because ultimately that is who is telling you, this is what we need, this is what we want. And you've got to, you started with that, that statement, solve the problems out there. And so what problems do your clients need solved? And that's how you will be sustainable and viable for the long term. We appreciate your tips today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angela, for having us. Yes, thank you. Check out businessfirstam.com to find out where to see our entire show. And don't forget to like, follow, and share Business First AM.